and this is my first sprint demo here at Red Hat. And uh, first, a uh, little bit of intro about the project I've been working on. So the aim of this project is to build a service that can aggregate commits and maybe generate release logs in, in a more intelligent manner so that we can maybe aggregate bugs, fixes, and documentation fixes separately and link them to authors and something like that. So as the first step of this project, I have been working on commit classification. So looking at a commit message, if I can if I can actually classify it as a bug or a feature addition or something like that. So I'll just share my screen now. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's good. Yeah. So the first technique I tried is uh, latent richlet allocation. So it is an unsupervised topic modeling based approach. And uh, given a corpus of text, it can segregate it into a number of topics built up of uh, separate keywords. And uh, for passing through the repository, I've been using PyGit. So what PyGit does it, it actually passes the repository and I can access individual commits like a Python object. So this is this provides me an easy approach for actually fetching the commit messages. So this is how I get the messages. And uh, there's one more thing that I do that I did was that uh, removing merge commits from the entire history of commits because we don't need that. So I've been only working on non merge commits. Then I did a lot of reprocessing, removing URLs, removing special characters, removing stop words, like uh, the small articles and something like that, getting the stem of words, and uh, finally tokenizing the text. So this is the raw corpus of text, like these are like collection of five commit messages. And eventually I tokenized them and I've uh, built a corpus like this. So this excludes all the small words and stop words. And after that, I built my LDA model and using the and I'll have to give the number of topics as well so I experimented with like two topics three topics four topics so when I did with three I got a sort of visualization to the pi LDAVIS tool and uh, let me just show to it uh, in a bigger window yeah so this tells me there are three main topics and I can see the keywords that are most common in these topics like this is the biggest topic and we can see the words like add build use and test in this collection of corpus. But the problem with this tool is that I can't relate an actual commit message to the to, to, to this topic. So what LDA does is it actually relates words to topics and aggregates them to build up a topic model. But I can't actually point out a specific commit that actually belongs to this model, to this topic. But it's still a nice tool to actually see what kind of words are actually aggregate together in a topic. I can see add build test here. I can see upstream fix and deployment here. So these are separate topics that we can see and what kind of words are actually common in these topics. So this is the first approach that I tried. And uh, the second thing I was uh, working on was using word embeddings. So in this approach as well, the pre-processing remains the same. I get the same set of token list and I get these vectors and uh, after that, I tried to run k-means clustering over these vectors. So the big thing about k-means clustering is we don't know k. So we have to find out how many clusters do I need. So for that, I was using the elbow method. So here I can see that I can use two or maybe three clusters as a value of k. So I've been using three for now. And uh, after that, this is, uh, so because these, high, these are higher dimensional vectors, so I can plot them in 2D space without any pre-processing. So I've been using TSNE technique for actually reducing it to two dimensions so that I can plot them and actually visualize how many clusters are we getting. So after using this, uh, this is the plot I got. So as you can see, most of the commits that, that's the thing that I mentioned earlier, like it's around 80% of the commits, they, are, they belong to the same cluster. So it's a kind of a very big cluster and two or, two or one or two small clusters apart from this. So then I ran this. So I actually tried to find out how, which words are most common in the in the bigger cluster. And uh, if I see it, this is cluster number one. In the cluster of one, I can see upstream is the most common word. 
upstream, add, test, fix. These words are most common in the biggest cluster. Apart from that, I saw a second cluster that includes the word bump. That I didn't understand why this word has been used. Maybe it's specific to the OpenShift origin repository. Maybe it's a version update, a version bump or something like that. OpenShift, this also comes up quite often in the second cluster. But the main finding is I get a big cluster with words like upstream, add, test and fix. So uh, I actually experimented the same thing on a, another repository as well. That's the OpenShift release repository. And I pretty much got the same results. One big cluster and two small clusters. And uh, here as well, in the biggest cluster, add word is there, test is there, operator is a different word that's here. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, there are lots more things that I can do actually. I can increase the size of the corpus. For now, I've been using a single repository for training it. Maybe I can use a collection of different repositories so that the model can generalize well maybe 10 or 20 or 50 repositories so that I can get a million commits and then test on it. And uh, there's one more thing that I can do uh, because I don't have a valuation metric right now. So I, there's no way I can validate it. So I think I'll have to manually annotate some commits as fixes or bug fixes or maybe feature additions so that I can try, I can build up new models and test on that uh, annotated data. So if you have any other suggestions how we can go about doing that, please, please share it. And uh, if you have any questions, so that's it for the demo for me, from my end. Thanks. Um, cool. Uh, thanks for that. Um, I wonder how we, um, how we can get some more meaning into these clusters. Um, because I would like to, I would like to understand what these clusters are about. Um, that, that is one thing. Uh, maybe uh, just using the words um, is not is not good enough. Um, and the other thing that uh, came to my mind is um, it might be um, it might be very helpful if we can identify uh, commis commit messages like um, um, this has been added because. Or the, this has been added as a temporary fix because of whatever bug, because it okay. would indicate something that might be removed later on. So uh, that that is a potential thing where where we can create an actionable item. So it's not heading down the direction of uh, I create better readmes, but I create better 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 reminders for for my coders, because typing in a commit message like yeah. I just did it to fix or to work around this and that. Um, it's easy to easy forgotten, and you don't remove it later on. Um, mm -hmm. Why I think that these uh, single words or that that list of words is is not uh, good enough is hmm, bump. Sounds to me like yeah, there's a bot stopping by, uh, bumping versions of this and that uh, dependency. Um, that is something that might be uh, summarized under, hey, we have uh, uh, all commit messages which belong to this cluster might be just uh, dependency updates. So may may maybe that's true, maybe it's not true. Uh, maybe maybe the meaning of bump changes a lot in, in uh, cooperation with other words. Um, yeah, yeah. Because if, if we don't want to bump the um, the, the uh, limitation of the array, that means something very different than bumping a version. So um, I'm I'm keen to see um, how how you model a little bit more meaning into all that stuff. Nice, nice. Thank you. Cool. Any any other comments, questions? So, like uh, considering the bot, maybe maybe that could be helpful. I don't know if OpenShift has like I think there's an OpenShift CI, and I don't know if it raises a pull request or not. Uh, but uh, sometimes it also commits, and like for example, for us, uh, the the commit messages are pretty same all the time, right? Automatic updating or release off. So uh, I was also getting into that point. I was also thinking that that bump could be like a actual string uh, commit message which they are putting, like bump of version which is happening by a bot. So maybe we can exclude that. Uh, just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Or uh, 
include these messages. So we can say we have an environment that uh, will automatically uh, bump versions for you, automatically generate uh, commit messages uh, for you. So we can uh, use uh, already fixed commits that, that we uh, produce. So we can offer like developers environment. I think, um, yeah, uh, I think uh, <laughs> even the word bump is uh, very interesting in itself. So let's let's see. Cool. Um, I'm gonna hit the button again.